Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the, uh, the session titled Nutrition, Protein and Dietary um, Regimens. <coughs> um, I'm David Rollins from Mass University in New Zealand, and the co-chair is Pat Patricia Doyle. Hello, from University of Calgary, Canada. And um, we've, we've, um, we've got one missing, missing speaker who's the uh, second speaker in the order, so we will be breaking for 15 minutes, um, but that won't be the end of the, the session. We're just sticking to the um, timetable schedule. And um, so the first speaker I'd like to introduce is uh, Stefan Kolomenchov uh, from the National Sports Academy in um, Sofia in Bulgaria. And um, Stefan's talk is titled Body composition and nutrient intake of Olympic and elite rhythmic gymnasts. Stefan. Thank you for the introduction. Dear chairman, dear chairwoman, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to start this session um, at ECSS 2019 and the topic that I'm presenting today is on body composition and nutrition of elite rhythmic gymnasts. Rhythmic gymnastics is an Olympic sport in which the gymnasts practice on floor with music in the background while they are working with their handheld apparatuses. And at the very top level, such as the Olympic Games and the World Championships, this sport has been mainly dominated by Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, as well as my home country, Bulgaria. Special consideration is always given to the body image of the gymnasts, and that demands particular attention on their body composition and their diet as well. And the aim of our study was to assess the body composition and the nutrient intake of elite rhythmic gymnasts from Bulgaria in comparison with some published guidelines for female gymnasts. This study included a unique sample of 21 elite rhythmic gymnasts from the Bulgarian national team. They were between the ages of 12 and 27, and they were divided into three groups, as you can see on the slide. I would like to mention here that the first group were actually the bronze medalists from the 2016 Olympic game. Moreover, the second group were gold medalists and silver medalists from the last two world championships in rhythmic gymnastics. Now, in terms of body composition, the measurements were taken at the National Sports Medicine Center in Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria. Height, weight, different circumferences, and skin folds were measured there. We computed the body mass index the percentile scores of height, weight, and body mass index of the participants. In order to determine the percentage of body fat, we applied, we applied Slaughter's equations, and for those gymnasts who were at the age of 18 and over, we applied Jackson and Pollock's equations for women based on seven skin folds. In order to calculate the percentage of skeletal muscle mass, we applied the Portman's et al and Lee et al's equations. For the nutritional assessment, we applied food frequency questionnaire. This questionnaire was used in our previous studies on artistic gymnasts, which is a different discipline from the gymnastics family. Based on the results of the food frequency questionnaire, we calculated the relative energy intake, the relative protein intake, the relative fat intake, and the relative carbohydrate intake, in addition to the energy contribution, which uh, comes from protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Additionally, we applied the second questionnaire, which consists of six questions, and they are all listed on the slide. And this questionnaire um, was uh, concentrated on different methods that these highly competitive gymnasts were using in order to maintain their ideal weight. Going to the results section, on the next slide you can see the main anthropometric parameters of the rhythmic gymnasts divided into their groups. The mean values of the body mass index in all of the groups were considerably low, 
lower than most of the published data in the literature for rhythmic gymnasts and as you can see the percentile score for the second and the third group was um, lower than the 15th percentile of the norms of the World Health Organization. There was no statistically significant differences between the weight that we measured and the ideal weight of the gymnasts. Now, the ideal weight was determined by the coaches. So there is um, subjectivity here. We got the values from, from the coaches and we couldn't find a precise methodology on how to calculate the ideal weight for rhythmic gymnasts in the literature. So we took these um, values, we analyzed them and also um, we, we took some anthropometric parameters and something like something similar like the Brock index, we came up with the following equation for ideal weight. Simply taking the height expressed in centimeters minus 118. So this equation um, best corresponded to the individual values of the rhythmic gymnasts for their ideal weight for this uh, sample. On the next slide, you can see the percentage of uh, body fat and its percentile scores for the different groups. The mean values were considerably low, but they were within the published values of um, percentage body fat for uh, rhythmic gymnasts in the literature. However, I have to take into account here that four of our gymnasts showed a really low uh, percent of body fat, lower than the um, essential body fat of 13% for women. That's essential body fat which is needed for the normal physiological functions of the body in women. And going to the nutritional assessment, on the left side you can see the relative energy needs for the gymnasts and then on the right side the calculated relative energy intake based on the uh, results from the food frequency questionnaire. We found significant differences in the second and third group. So the gymnasts from the second and the third group had um, their energy intake significantly lower than their energy needs. But on the whole, all of the gymnasts had considerably low energy intake, which was um, close to the lower recommended values for energy intake for rhythmic gymnasts. This is based on the guidelines for female gymnasts, quite recent review published in 2017 by Dallas et al. Then on the next slide you can see the relative amounts of the different macronutrients. And then again, similar picture emerges here. The gymnasts were struggling to meet the lower recommended values for fat and carbohydrates. They managed to secure the recommended 1.5 grams per kilogram of protein and even exceeded that, reaching nearly 2 grams per kilogram for the adolescent gymnast. Then we took a look at the energy contribution which came from protein and that was also higher than the recommended 15% for uh, female gymnasts and most of this protein actually came from animal sources as you can see from the pie charts around 60% in all of the groups came from animal sources and only 40% came from plant-based protein a good explanation for the lower amounts of carbohydrates and fats and high amount of protein we found in uh, the answers of the gymnasts where they indicated that those two macronutrients were actually mostly reduced in their diets, carbohydrates and fats, in order to maintain their ideal weight. The gymnasts also indicated that the main information that they gain on, on nutrition, on diet, on weight management and um, ideal body weight um, came from their coaches. In conclusion, some of the gymnasts, they had anthropometric parameters which were lower than the uh, lower amounts, or lower recommended amounts for rhythmic gymnasts. They had lower um, essential body fat and lower percentile score of the weight and the body mass index. And therefore, when identifying the ideal weight of the gymnasts, coaches should take into account not only the body image, but also some health related criteria 
for body composition in women. And on the whole, the relative amounts of the different macronutrients were close to the lower recommended amounts for female gymnasts without any significant differences, but still some individual gymnasts had lower uh, values. And therefore, these gymnasts should work with their coaches and their teachers in order to maintain their ideal weight without diverging greatly from the guidelines for female gymnasts. Thank you very much for your attention and I welcome any questions you might have. I will take questions from the floor. Uh, my name is Oscar Malin from Norway. Uh, thank you for a very enlightening uh, speech here. Um, you stated that uh, the coaches were the, the most important source for dietary information to the, the, the um, athletes. Uh, and I also noted that the, the coaches meant that the athlete should be about one kilo leaner than they actually were. So I wonder what nutritional uh, knowledge does these uh, coaches have? Are they really able to give good nutritional advices? Thank you for your question. That's, that is an issue, isn't it? Because, um, as, you, as I mentioned before, some of the individual gymnasts had quite low, concerning low um, amounts of, of certain parameters. So, again, here, um, if the gymnasts think that the coaches are uh, main people to, to receive this information. We need to think how to possibly um, give the right information to the coaches. In my home country, Bulgaria, for example, in order to um, work as a coach, you need to go through a four-year degree in sports science with a professional qualification for your certain sport. Most of the coaches have this uh, professional qualification um, and they should have the degree of knowledge that is required. However, in rhythmic gymnastics and in, in this sport, again, uh, it, it's very subjective, especially this calculation of uh, the ideal weight. It depends how they see it. It depends on, on the coach's experience in the past. It depends on the body image of the gymnasts. So it, it's very tricky here in order not to go too low in the norms. I thank you for the clear talk, uh, Walter Peters, Mass University. I was wondering, when did you take the uh, dietary intake assessment? Because uh, I saw that, <clears throat> based on your calculations for energy needs and uh, energy intake, that there might be a, uh, a negative energy balance, particularly what I saw in the uh, junior team. And I was wondering, did you measure the intake chronically, which might then reflect a long term in, say, weight loss in an age group that's in the stage of their growth and actually should probably take in more energy to uh, assist that growth. So when did you take the dietary measurements? Yeah, that's a very good point. It, it wasn't consistently throughout the year. Um, it was in a competition period. It was one time. It was a screenshot of, of this study. It was a screenshot, not a longitudinal study. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, really insightful. I just, uh, oops, sorry. I just wondered where did you get, and maybe I missed it, the 118 number for your ideal weight. So um, it, it is. So there is uh, something called the Broca index, which is taking the um, the height expressed in centimeters minus 100, which gives an ideal weight of the healthy population. We try to do something similar for the rhythmic gymnasts in order to provide the coaches with some um, equation that they might use, especially not so experienced coaches. So we took all of these um, values for the idea weight, all of these numbers which were given to us by the coaches, okay, and we took the values of their height. We analyzed them and uh, we produce this equation best fits when, with the individual results from our study. So that has to be verified whether that will be the case for other gymnasts, maybe not so qualified gymnasts, 
whether this equation should um, be changed. But it worked really well with the individual values of, of the gymnasts from our sample. All right, so just as a visual then, you took sort of like the best fit line? Is that what you're sort of... Yes, there was, of course, there were some, some of the gymnasts, there was some variation. The biggest variation was about three kilograms. So it's not perfect, but we found out that these variations are for the gymnasts who are very tall or um, very short. So maybe perhaps a coefficient which might be added to this um, equation will be a, a good way to go forward, specifically for these gymnasts who are taller and those gymnasts who are shorter. Thank you. Um, I've just got a, a question around an observation for data. The, the Olympic group had higher percentage muscle mass compared to the, um, the, the national group. Um, so that's um, related to performance level. Um, have you got any explanations for the, the higher percentage muscle mass? Um, is it, 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 it's probably ergogenic. Mm. Um, that's quite, it was quite interesting for us. Unfortunately, we couldn't find a certain like a percentile scores in order to assess these results for rhythmic gymnasts. So there were no percentile scores for percentage of body, uh, percentage of skeletal muscle mass. And also most of the studies on rhythmic gymnasts didn't really report this parameter. We found one study which report, who reported that parameter and the, the results were close to our second group. So it's, it's true that the first group made of the Olympic um, bronze medalists in 2016, they had a higher percentage of skeletal muscle mass. It might be because of um, time of uh, training, they got quite a lot more uh, sports experience, but also the second group had really good results as well. So it's quite interesting though. Mm. Okay, thank you. I think it was thank you. Okay, well, we're going to pause and, and then restart at um, 5.15 to uh, allow for a gap that's, that, that's been opened up by the um, uh, sickness of the, the scheduled speaker. So, um, yeah, we'll restart in about 12 minutes.